we fear this world. We fear the leaders. We fear the people who have the sustenance that we want to, that we are begging them for. So they got us pledging this and pledging to that and not pledging to our Lord. Making us forget more and more why we're here, whose we are, and who we are and whose we are. It doesn't make any sense to be in this world and not know about our eternal being. Because no one gets out of this life alive. No one stays here. This is not a place, this is not our permanent residence. And because we're here now, and we're on this side of the earth now, we think that we're going to be here forever. We know people that are gone. People that we knew, that loved ones that we knew. Our parents, our aunts and uncles, our cousins, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our friends. That we were bumping shoulders with. They are no longer on this side, but they are still in existence. Because the spiritual part of us is eternal. It has no beginning and it has no end. And when we're here and we're in tune with that, there is no lack. How can you think in terms of lack? How can you be deceived by the shadows and deception of Satan saying that there's a lack of economics, there's a lack of food? When the sun is shining every day, causing the vegetation to be what it is, Everything in submission, the whole world is in submission, except the human being. Allah says, I'm going to give that trust to the heavens. It rejected it. He said the mountains, it rejected it. The earth rejected it. But the human being accepted that trust to represent our Lord on earth. Allah says we were unjust to ourselves. Why? Because once we took that on, we took it on with our ego, listening to shaitan to control it. Instead of listening to Allah Almighty's guidance and how to distribute, how to strip, deal with that wealth mentally, physically, spiritually, and all the ways that a human being can be happy and prosperous, not fearing death, not grieving, and not fearing only their Lord's displeasure with them because they are aware of that. That transcends into everything that we do. We think that the only time we think that when we go to the mosque or the church or the synagogue, do we only think of our souls when we go into a building? We are the church. We are the mosque. We are the synagogue. It is within us. We feed ourselves. We even stop at McDonald's and eat something. We feed that body. But we don't stop to take time to feed our souls. Oh, my Lord, thank you. Thank you for my life, my health, and my strength. Thank you for providing the heavens and the earth to be of service to us as human beings, to represent you on earth, to establish your kingdom on earth. To be Lord Without being deceived by that one who is our avowed enemy. He was talked about in the Torah, the Old Testament. He was talked about in the Injil, the gospel of Jesus. He was talked about in the Quran by Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with all of them. And we don't know. And yet through our own experiences, we see how we are cheated. How we feel. How we end up in situations that we didn't want to be in because we made wrong choices, because we doubted our Lord. And we expect somebody to give us something. We have everything we will ever need. It's just an illusion that is outside. If you have children, you want to hide gifts from them, hide it in their room. They never look. They never find it. Put it under their mattress. They'll never know. You hide it somewhere else, they'll find it. Allah sent us here with treasures inside ourselves, we never look. We always looking outside of ourselves. He and she got more than me. I don't like her because she's more beautiful. She got this. I don't like him because he think he's cool. We got that. Everybody got something. The only reason Joseph 
was beautiful because his, he kept his faith with his law. The only time he realized that he made a mistake is when he was in the prison and someone who he had interpreted the dream and he was the cupbearer for the king. He said, remember me to the king. Tell the king I'm in here. What did he do? He neglected to remember his Lord. He told the guy to remember him to the king. And he learned a valuable lesson. And he stayed in prison some more years behind that. Because the Lord said, if you don't know me by now, you ain't never going to know me. I took you out the well, had somebody to come and get you out the well, I gave you a nice security, yes, somebody attacked you and tried to seduce you, but I took you out and put you in the prison. This is not an ordinary prison for you. Even though it's decadent, we're making it to be like paradise for you. And you could imagine, they didn't have no, they didn't have no sewage system and all that. You weren't getting three hots in the cot. You didn't have no ways to work with or no cable TV. But Allah made it for everything he would ever need. Because he was relying on his Lord. He was asking his Lord, oh my Lord, help me. Oh my Lord, help me. Oh my Lord, help me. Why do we think that that's so... I don't even know the word to say. It's so stupid. That we don't turn to our Lord for everything. Even our shoestrings. Oh my Lord, I don't have no shoestrings on my shoes. Bam, oh there's something I have tying up right here, a, a picture hanging up. I use that. Anything! Lies, you have to use that power. <coughs> we are a creation, not a creator. And that's, not, that's why those who have that connection to their Lord, they're always gonna have what they need. You can't cheat them, you can't beat them, you cannot trick them. You can't deceive them. Satan does not deceive them. When they feel disturbed, they say, oh, my Lord, forgive me. I must be disturbed because I did. I wronged my soul. They repent. Bam, Allah opens it up and they see. When they brought, finally brought Joseph out of the prison because they killed nobody, all his wise people couldn't interpret his dream. They were telling him that, you know what, they all, they had, he had different, he had sorcerers, he had magicians, he had all kinds of wiseers around him. And he brought them all together and he told them about the dream. They said, man, you're getting old, you know, it's, you might be confused. This sink, where you, did you pull the cover on you when you went to sleep? You may be having a night, it was a nightmare. So they all got together and consensus was, it was a nightmare. So the cupbearer heard about it. And he said, there's someone in prison that was able to interpret my dream and he was accurate. He says, bring him to me. So he went to get him. Joseph said, no, I can't come here. Clear me up with the, the Zuleika, who was the one who tried to seduce him because everybody thought he, was, he had tried to rape her. So he cleared it out before I get out of prison. After the king cleared that up, cleared his name out, brought him out, Joseph told him what the dream was. The king didn't tell him the dream. Joseph told him what the dream was. And he said, you make me your financial advisor, and you let me start the first economic system, I'll make sure that you get the plenty when you had the plenty, and when the less come, or when the famine come, you'll still be able to keep rocking and rolling. And that's what the king did. So who became the king? Joseph, jealous by his brothers, thrown in the well, left for dead, taken somewhere to be killed because someone was, it was, it was made to think that he was trying to rape one of the uh, wazir's wife. They could have killed him, put him in the prison. They could have killed him. Now Allah brings him out and puts him over everything. Subhanallah. 